Hi, everyone, and welcome to the IPT Podcast. Today with me, I have a very special guest, Alvaro Pozo, who's my co-host today. Welcome. He is the COO and general manager of T-Rock International. What a treat for me today to be with Telsis <laughs> and IPT. This a is amazing. A change of pace. No, Chris. <laughs> He's going to be sorely missed, I'm sure, but what a treat for me. Thank you for having us, oh. and uh, to be honest, this is something that we really enjoy. Uh, not just participating on, but also following. So you've done a great job. Oh, Thank thanks, you. Alvaro. It's a pleasure to have you. And today we have with us uh, Luis Bonet. We just had a great conversation with him. Yes, Luis Bonet is our country manager for the Northern Cone. So he looks after Mexico and Colombia today. Nice. And uh, he has been one of uh, T Rock International's earliest uh, employees and uh, one of one of our uh, our leaders in the market. Nice. So we we got a chance to speak to him and talk a little bit about trends that are happening in LATAM and also what uh, the big shining star is, which we always know is has been very popular lately, especially in our podcast, talking about Viva. And so. Uh, we're going to kick it off to our, uh, to our sponsor, so a word from our sponsor, and then stay tuned for the IPT podcast. Viva is T-Rock's virtual interactive brand ambassador. Viva delivers contactless, personalized shopping and service experiences anytime, anywhere through live video engagements and rich media content. Viva is the only video conference-based, omni-channel customer experience solution that delivers sales, service, and supports experiences whenever, however, and wherever they're needed. When customers want answers, they want them instantly and accurately. With Viva, you close the gap between online and offline engagements with safe, convenient, and accurate real-time experiences. Viva is best when experienced. So visit vivaconnect.com to see more for yourself and schedule a demo. Hello, welcome to the IPT podcast. Here we are with Luis Bonet and I have Alvaro Pozo with me. Hey, welcome. Good I have to a, see you again. I have, I have a new sidekick. I'm really excited about it. I'm enjoying this. Welcome. No, welcome, I mean, this, welcome. Is, this is the way we should have always done it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris has been kicked to the curb. <laughs> yeah, who could do without Chris? <laughs> so Luis, welcome. Welcome to the show. We're excited to have you. We're really excited to talk about all things Latam and T-Rock. And so... Um, introduce yourself. Give us a little bit of information about yourself. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much for the time. I'm very excited. I'm nervous, but you know. The conversation. <laughs> We're just here having a I'm, conversation. I'm, I'm part of the, of the T-Rock International team. Uh, Alvaro Bos is my boss. Uh, I manage uh, Colombia and Mexico. I'm very grateful about that. And Part of my work is opening, opening new, markets. new markets. Yep. T Rock International as a whole is, in, uh, is a fairly new division for mm -hmm. T Rock, and uh, we're starting from scratch and we're developing business, but more importantly, there's a lot of operational things that we do. So our team is not just um, you know business development, but really we do a lot of uh, operational but, uh, marketing. We do we do it all. We're the one one stop shop. How many years have you guys been expanding in in Latam? Uh, this would be going our third year, uh, two of which were pandemic driven. So it's. Yes. Uh, <laughs> And you, have you seen the expansion as a result of the pandemic really accelerate or? Actually, it's decelerated. Okay, got it's, it. It's decelerated. In, in the type of business that we've done, which is, uh, you know, presential and retail, where we, have, where we want people in the stores, is very difficult to do so when there are so many different um, guidelines, so many different changes within any store setting. So, yeah. But it's, it's fortunate in the sense that T Rock has created a lot of avenues, and now we have Viva, which has been a very, very welcomed uh, solution throughout all of our customer base, and we expect a lot of growth there. Nice. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. How are you expanding the markets? Give us a little bit of your of your background. We'd love to hear some of that. My background, all all, all my life, I, I was worked for for uh, technological companies or corporations like. Uh, Samsung, LG, Bose, uh, I was working for Philips, uh, all, all my life or part of my life is, uh, was, was in the commercial uh, department for these kind of companies. And for me, this is it's, it's great. Which we know we all need, right? It's always, it's just become uh, part of our lifestyle. I'm involved in, in technology. People. We have IPT. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, so, so Luis, what, um, 
what what was the, the biggest I think driver? What was a what was what motivated you the most to join T Rock? Considering that it was a startup, that it was new, that the, that you were building something from scratch, what what was the biggest motivation for you to join T Rock? I think that it's it's like a startup for me because uh, this is like a startup, but not in the hard way. It's in, in the easy way because you have the tools have the information, have the structure of the, uh, the biggest company to start in, in, in Latin. Uh, for me, I think that, uh, uh, and my family, of course, it's, it's something very special because I had the opportunity to grow this market, to change the, the way that uh, T-Rock in US see Latin, uh, make and, and, and increase the growth, uh, maybe more than in US, uh, and, and, and this, this, this kind of things for me, uh, it will be great because I, I can expand my opportunities to uh, Colombia, to other countries, to make a very big uh, structure uh, for, for, for my position. And of course, this uh, role and make me biggest in, in, inside of the, of the corporation. No, that's excellent. I love the answer because it really talks about opportunity and growth. And I, I think that's what T-Rock really provides as a company and services to our customers too, right? Yeah. It, it, it's opportunity and growth, you know, increase, increasing of sales, increasing of attention to customers, customer experience. So now, I, I love that answer. You know, I'm curious because I know, Al, you do a lot of work with in, in the States, right? But then also, mm -hmm. of course, you cross over. And so I'd like to understand the difference. I don't, I'm not on the LATAM side as much. I'd like to understand the difference of the growth in LATAM versus states. Is there a, is there a difference technology-wise? Is there any hindrance? Is there advancement more? So maybe maybe LATAM is willing to try more things that maybe the, the states are not as, you know, or maybe shyer about trying. You know, it's, it's interesting because technology has basically closed a lot of barriers when it comes to different markets. So you know, something like Vivo, for example, that is new technology per se, there's early adoption in LATAM, there's early adoption in, in Europe. I mean, we're talking to customers around the world, not just LATAM, mm -hmm. but there, there isn't a sense of first it has to launch in the U.S. before it gets to us. Or, you know, I think that has been largely raised because the technology has been really, really um, expanding opportunities. So... I don't know if that answers your question, but you know, there's things when it comes to people, our people business, that is probably easier to do in the U.S. than in LATAM, because there is a different labor expectation in LATAM, and uh, you know, that being the case, we we uh, have certain roadblocks when it comes to our people business. But technology, there's definitely not not a big difference. No, I think that it's something very complex uh, for developing markets such as Mexico or Colombia, because the, 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 the people or, or, or the owners of the companies don't trust uh, in this kind of technology, uh, don't trust in this kind of resources. Uh, but for today, I think that uh, something that the pandemic brings us, uh, something good for, for us is uh, this kind of people uh, change that, uh, change the mindset and, and permits to open for these this technologies. For example, Viva, like, like uh, uh, Alvaro told us, uh, Viva is amazing. It's, uh, for example, maybe you can have a, a promoter for uh, e-commerce. Nobody imagined that. It's, it's very important. Yeah, so I, I think that as we move forward, um, the, 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 the lines will kind of blur mm -hmm. as far as the ability to expand markets. When it comes to technology, obviously that's already happening. But there's also a benefit in LATAM versus, for example, Europe, that it's, it, the culture is very U.S. driven. So if a company like t rock established in the U.S. and we have processes, we have, uh, we, we have structure, we have things that we, you know, best practices that we created here in the U.S. Those are great to replicate in other countries because there is, you know, the, the cultural fit 
in Mexico, there's a cultural fit in Chile, Colombia, you know, Peru that, that from the U.S. because bringing that type of know-how is something that is a benefit. So that's one of our biggest value propositions when we expand into markets, that we're coming into these markets in a much more professional uh, partnership way for our customers than an agency, which is basically an HR-driven, you know, an HR-driven exercise for, for customers in those countries. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would think that Viba um, is something that's extremely well received. I know, I know a lot of the people that I have had connections with. You know, everybody's on WhatsApp in that town, right? Sure. Like, yeah. And so I, you know, even the, the pandemic, where before we were we were not sure about QR codes, and now everybody has adopted a, a, a QR code. Everybody knows what to do, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I would think that. Um, at least the conversations that I've sat in with all of you, what seems to me is that LATAM is m embracing more this new technology, even more so than in the States. Just, you know, I asked that question because I, I sat in on those calls and I realized that there is more hesitancy to adopt a technology like a Viva or any of our services or what have you. There is a little bit more of a hesitation from U.S. clients than there is from LATAM. LATAM has seemed to have really embraced the Viva technology, the, the mm -hmm. many meetings that we've sat in. Sure. Um, and has said, yeah, let's let's do a test pilot or let's, you know, let's try this because we think it's going to be better served. I mean, we even I, a couple of months ago, we sat in with a guy who was um, he owned several real estate. Yep. Um, and they wanted to put a Viva, you know, totem in one of their stores. It was going to sell a penthouse. And, you know, it was just really interesting how many different. Yeah. How many different approaches Viva can scale to, right? Yeah, and, and I think that's what, you know, to your point, the pandemic has highlighted things for positive and negative. Positively, I think technology has created a faster adoption rate. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned QR codes, right? Mm -hmm. QR codes were not necessarily something that was flying off the shelves. We all understood what they did, mm -hmm. but it wasn't something that people gravitated towards where today it seems kind of like commonplace, right. right? We all go to restaurants and we get our menus in a QR code. And uh, now we see other services like a, you know, having the ability to talk to a brand ambassador via QR code. Mm -hmm. So technology has been, a, a, I think, a positive that, you know, the pandemic has created some positive opportunities for technology. You know, and there's also, you know, you just mentioned there's certain certain things that can probably be adopted faster in LATAM. I think that part of it is need based. So. If you look at uh, you know certain stores that were not able to have, they had a quota of how many people could go into a store. That's what we saw at the at the beginning of the pandemic, but that still lived on 18 months into the pandemic in LATAM. So technology that can create brand ambassador was fantastic. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., we kind of went back to our normal retail visitations. You know, maybe some mask wearing, but not as mandated as it is in other countries. Right. So there's there's further need for technology in other countries. And so aside just from Viva, because it seems it's always like, you know, the 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 gleaming, you know, shining light in at T Rock, right? Aside from Viva, what else is happening in Latam that that are services and solutions that T Rock is offering? Like do we have brand ambassador programs? Tell us a little bit about what other technologies and our services and solutions that we have that that are expanding down there. So that's the other side, right? So if Viva is a positive, the mm -hmm. other side is that because the same quotas and having you know restrictions on who can go into an indoor space, brand ambassador programs have paused, mm -hmm. and you know they want to keep and all the space available for customers, not representatives. Makes sense. Yeah. So that's why Viva becomes a solution, mm -hmm. but at the same time, our people programs are kind of you know paused at the time. Got it. So I, I think that from our services as well, there's a lot of things that we're doing from the MI side. We you know Vision and, and, and Navigator, which are you know field management tools. Mm -hmm. They're very helpful. Tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, and I think Luis, you have some very good examples too, right? As far as how Vision can be helpful in in the Mexican market. Yeah, it's it's a very personalized experience. For example. You can you can up the representatives of of sales floor in in, in real time. Uh, maybe uh, you you know about Electra. Electra is a, a very big retailer in in Mexico in in the lowest market. Um, and uh, about uh, the, the, this kind of, of tool, uh, you can you can find the promoter all over the the work. 
uh, it's, it, it's simple. If, if the, the promoters go to the store, you, 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 can, uh, you can follow the, the trip to the store. And then when, when the, the promoter check in in the store, when the promoter check out to, to take the food, um, and you know every time what happened with, with this promoter, the promoter. Every touch point, every right. touch point that he hits, right? Or he or yeah, she. Yeah, can send you the traffic inside of the store, the competitors, uh, the, uh, I don't know, all the people that, that uh, he attend and how many sales have in, in the real time. And I think that it's, it's amazing for us. And, 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 and you can find all the tools in real time. I think that is, it's amazing. So yeah. you, you was expanding, uh, expanding markets within, within LATAM. I'm curious, what do you hear? What is the most or the biggest question that you constantly get asked when you're meeting with new clients or selling services? What's, what's the biggest challenge in LATAM right now? The price. <laughs> that was I think a, we have that, that was a fast the answer, board. right? That was a fast answer. No, I not. So, I mean more for retailers in Latam. What's their biggest challenge? Aside from Alvaro just mentioned, you know, there's limitations on how many people can go in store and things like that. But wh I'm curious, what other challenges are ex being experienced in Latam that are maybe different from what's happening in the U.S. right now? I think that there's there's something to to. Um, to the omni-channel experience that we all now live under, right? I mean, omni-channel has been a buzzword for some time now. We're living it. And, and, and we're living it today in a much more e-commerce driven way, right? Uh, we, we order online, we receive at home. I think the biggest challenge for retailers in, in developing countries when it comes to omni-channel is that e-commerce is easy to set up a website, even a, 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 a e-store. Mm -hmm. But the logistics that accompany it, that, that you have to have a well put together yeah. logistical solution, not, you know, you're, you're talking about shipping, you're talking about uh, fulfillment, but also delivery, right? We have luxuries in the developed countries where you order anything and there's a slew of different ways that you, it could get to your home. Those things are not as advanced in, in other countries. So ordering something on Amazon it's not going to be a two-day delivery. It's going to be a two-week delivery, mm -hmm. and you know it, it's going to go through quite a bit of a, a of a journey before it gets to you. So, so the omni-channel experience, I think, is not where we're used to it in the developed countries. In the developing countries, that's that's something that you know it's it, it's a noted difference. Mm -hmm. Would you agree, Luis? Yes. Yeah, of course. And, and and actually, I wanted to expand on something that Luis said about you know the 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 company that we that we're trying to uh, that we gave as an example for Vision. Vision is a field uh, management tool, and is a tool that a a brand ambassador or a representative or promoter can have with them in their mobile device. What happens is that we have a customer with 1,300 stores, right? How do we schedule correctly? How do we create the right geolocation? How do we create the right uh, visiting patterns? We use Vision, and Vision allows us to take this you know, optimize the, the promoters, optimize the brand ambassadors to make sure that they're getting their tasks done correctly. But more importantly, that they're taking down the information that's going to help the product sell more. So these tasks, you know, a, a, a is, a, it's, it's in, in a one way is for the promoter to do their job well, but in another, the promoter is, re, is recovering information from their visits. That's going to help the product move better. You know, whether it's inventory, whether it's placement, whether it's planogram, all these things that are key to customers engaging with your product, the promoter is now inside the store creating a list of things that will make you have a better experience on the, in the customer's floor or in the retail floor, I'm sorry. And Vision as a service does well in the town. And Vision does that. The Vision creates that solution, mm -hmm. and it's been something that's been very, very uh, well accepted by our markets. That's great. That's fantastic. And you can find a lot of information inside of the, of the APP because maybe you can take a, a training and you have information about the, the product. It's a very good tool for, for all. Oh, so within Vision, you also have information, product information and training. You could, pre yeah, Vision can provide you, a, a, you know, data points about what you're going to do. So it's task assignment and data points for your visit as a, pro as a brand ambassador. Fantastic. That's fantastic. 
So what else can you tell us about the LATAM market? The LATAM market, I think that it, it have a lot of opportunities. Uh, the companies uh, for today needs to invest in, in technology to make the change. Uh, for example, one of, of the, the biggest challenge in Mexico is uh, have a, a Viva representatives inside of the Liverpool. But we start with that e-commerce and, and the, the web page of, of uh, Liverpool is the most biggest in, in Latin for a retailer and have a visit. Uh, for us, it's it's very good point to start because it's, uh, it's the, the better page to, to make an e-commerce. And it, it was the, the first page that had this service and it's totally different for all the market, for Latin market, almost. Yeah, what, what else do you see happening? I think, you know, the pandemic obviously has some data points, Luis, but what else do you see happening in retail as a whole in, in Mexico specifically? I think, you know, this probably could play a lot to Colombia, but Mexico specifically, do you, what, what do you think has been the, the last five years, what have been the biggest changes in retail? Well, the e-commerce, uh, the e-commerce uh, changed the market, of course, uh, but uh, for today, I think that the people wants to go out of the, <laughs> of the streets. Uh, maybe the change uh, is different than the other years. Uh, the other years maybe grows 10%, uh, 15% uh, in, in the physical stores. For today, I think that maybe it grows 25 40 percent because the people once uh, once go to the store and 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 make the, the the sales or the device inside of the stores feeling the experience to, to, touching all things uh i think that is the it is the it is the change so so you so you think that now that people want to get out of their homes and into yes. stores Considering that you know there there was a quota for the amount of representatives, there's going to be more people, more traffic. So the stores need to have better customer experience. Will that open up the the brand ambassador and promoter opportunities for T Rock? Yeah, a lot of opportunities right now. Uh, we have some things that uh, we need to 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 fix because the government have a a, a lot of rules uh, about the traffic uh, inside of the stores. But maybe in one or two months, uh, these rules change and, and permits that all the people uh, have, have a good experience inside of the stores and, and permits the promoters and ambassadors makes the work, makes the, the, the work that they... That's great. Do. That's great. That's fantastic. I mean, everything is so fluid now, right? I, I feel like the entire, yeah, I feel like the entire pandemic has just given humanity an exercise in fluidity. And, <laughs> and, and patience. And, and, well, patience, yeah, but just be like, anything can change in a moment's notice. So like next month, you're, you may be selling something different. You know, it may not be V-Bun so much. It may be brand ambassador programs or assembly or merchandising or what have you. Absolutely. Or store resets, right? <laughs> Um, I, I think that's a great place to like to, to kind of wrap it up. Luis, if we can ask you some questions, these are kind of fun questions that we like to ask of our of all of our guests. So you ready? Ready. OK, so what would you say is your superpower? Oh, uh, I think that my superpower is the smiling of my of my of my sons, because if, if they smiles, I make me very happy and feel super powerful. So, vamos a decirlo en español. Si tus hijos están sonriendo, there's no, absolutely nothing wrong in the world. That gives you your superpower. So, if his if his sons are smiling, that's that's a that's actually that's awesome. Yeah, I agree. I, I feel like they give me my kids give me superpowers too. Yes. So then, what would be your kryptonite? I think we know well, the answer to that too. <laughs> it's, it's it's so funny. This this. Uh, answer i think there is uh uncertainty and the lack of loyalty of the people 
Yeah, I agree. That is. Yeah, no, that's that's inconsistency that, for me is like ah, it drives me nuts. Yeah, or lack of integrity is another thing that those those things really uh, burns my blood, right? Yeah. Um. So so then, what do you? What would you say? Or you you could say what would you appreciate the most of what technology has given you? Out of all of the things that not out of all of the things that technology has provided to us, right? What would you say is the thing that you value the most? Like for me, it's connectivity. It's being able to connect with people that I may have lost touch with from college or, or even when I lived in other parts of the country. What would you say is your favorite or the thing that you value the most about what technology has given us as a society? That communication. Communication. Connectivity, right? The ability yeah, to connectivity, connect. communication, yeah. I think yes. that th that's a common answer. And, and, and I think that we all see the great value in connectivity and kind of communication. I, I, I wish that we didn't use those same tools to kind of keep ourselves away, right? Because <laughs> to your point, I, you could know what's happening Before with somebody. Before you have that, to fly to somebody and be like, hey, I need right. to go for a visit. And so you maybe get a little bit lazier and you're, you're less connected. Even though we're more connected, to your yeah. point, I feel like we are more disconnected in our society now in true connection in like human form right and like connection yeah, that way it, yeah and i think it's one of those things that we have we as a, as a society have to have to do a better job because you could know while you're in your hand something that somebody that you knew 30 years ago is doing with their day right but, but that's ignoring the them. person that's next to you yeah i agree right? uh, yeah i agree <laughs> I, that's one thing that drives me nuts is like when i'm like if i'm having dinner with somebody or i'm having drinks and that person's on their phone i'm like be present, right? Like you're yeah. here with me, like just give me the time, go home and check your phone then, right? I agree, that drives me so bonkers. We, we have to, we have to, <laughs> these great tools and these great advances, we, we have to do a, a good job of using them correctly too. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, so last question is, if you could have been credited with creating anything that techno in technology, what would you have been uh, happy to have created? Super easy. Internet. <laughs> <laughs> the information superhighway, huh? That would have been you. Very nice. Very yes. nice. <laughs> Luis, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Thank you, Luis. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for uh, representing our company in, in new markets. And uh, I think the growth and the opportunity has have to be the keys that we live under. Yeah. Thanks, Luis. Thank you. Thank you for your time.